Hello and welcome to universityofshed.net. This lecture is taken from University of Shed's mathematics series and is on pi. Even if I had all the remaining time of the universe to answer the question, what is the exact value of pi, it would be impossible to give a finite answer. The reason? Because pi, the symbol which represents the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, is an irrational number meaning that its decimal places will literally continue forever without stopping and without repeating itself. However, although this fact is universally agreed upon, mathematicians continue to seek more and more specific values of pi, with the current record being five trillion, yes trillion, decimal places. A seemingly unnecessary task, you might think, since the circumference of the Earth can be calculated to an accuracy less than one centimetre using just ten decimal places. And not even the most precise physicist requires more than fifteen, even at the quantum level. But such is the magic and romance of pi that mathematicians have devoted their lives to understanding this symbol better, and there remains the hope that other mathematical mysteries may be unlocked as we delve into its inner recesses. <clears throat> No matter how large or how small the circle, the circumference, the distance round the outside, will always be larger than the diameter, the distance from side to side through the centre of the circle, by a factor of 3.1415927 to seven decimal places, and that is quite an amazing thought. Given the importance of circles in human existence, it is not surprising that this concept is an ancient one. The earliest known record is around 1900 BCE in the Egyptian rind papyrus 3.16 and on Babylonian tablets 3.125, each of which are within 1% of pi's true value. Archimedes in the 3rd century BCE took up the study of pi so seriously that it is thought his death was the result of being so engrossed in his circles that he did not notice the advancing Roman army and was beheaded as a result. His system was unable to pinpoint pi exactly, but he was able to identify the upper and lower limits of pi, correctly stating that it was less than 3 and 1 seventh, but greater than 3 and 10 seventy -onths. The average of these two values is 3.1419, which is within 0.0003% of the true value. Further specificity was realised in the year 480, when a Chinese father and son team, using a system of inc inscribed polygons whose area is known, managed to obtain a value of pi which was within eight millionths of a percent of today's value. No one would find a more accurate value for more than a thousand years. Two other dates in understanding pi are 1706, when William Jones first used the symbol because pi was the first letter of the Greek word periphery, and 1761, when Johann Lambert proved that pi was indeed irrational. Many of the core uses of pi are well known, specifically related to the properties of circles and spheres. Pi r squared, pi times the square of the radius, gives us the area of a circle. Pi d, pi times the diameter, gets you the circumference of a circle, pi d squared, pi times the diameter squared, gives you the surface area of a sphere, and four thirds pi r cubed gives you the volume of a sphere. Pi is also used in a number of other important theories and laws such as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, Einstein's theory of general relativity, Coulomb's law of electrical force, and Kepler's third law. It is impossible to ever square the circle. However, this has not stopped countless professional and amateur mathematicians from trying over the ages. The importance of pi was recognised in the ancient world and is still at the centre of investigations into mathematics, physics and engineering in the 21st century. This universality is captured most poetically by Augustus de Morgan who called pi this mysterious 3.14159 which comes in at every door and window and down every chimney. <laughs>